The first truly big trade of the 2023 MLB offseason just occurred as the Seattle Mariners traded star third baseman Eugenio Suarez to the Arizona Diamondbacks, the defending NL champion. For the Mariners, they've made it known this offseason that they wanted to cut down on strikeouts, and although Suarez provides a lot of pop at the plate, he does strike out a lot as well, so it makes sense that if they're going to cut down on strikeouts in their lineup, Suarez would be a natural place to start, even though he does still provide a lot of offensive production. For the Diamondbacks, this makes a lot of sense as well. Their third baseman for most of 2023 was a very old Evan Longoria, and as much as I want him to be successful and have a ring, he's a great guy. It doesn't really bode well for success to have a now 39-year-old third baseman anchoring your lineup. And Emmanuel Rivera is a solid player, but he's definitely not a guy who's going to help you win a World Series. He'll be a good bench piece to kind of come in and out of games. So to get a star third baseman really accelerates Arizona's window and make sure that in 2024 they can compete in a very tough NL West. In exchange for his services, the Diamondbacks gave up right-hand relieving pitching prospect Carlos Vargas and journeyman catcher Sebi Zavala. This is the second catcher that the Mariners have acquired this offseason, first starting with Blake Hunt, who you can check out in my Blake Snell trade video a little bit about him. And it's interesting to see exactly how things are going to work. Tom Murphy is a free agent, and they already have Cal Raleigh, so it'll be interesting to see how exactly their catching situation is going to pan out. For the Diamondbacks, it looks like Evan Longoria is going to hit free agency and he's not going to come back and be their third baseman or even a bench player. He'll definitely find a home elsewhere. I think Oakland might be a really interesting possibility if, as they look to potentially trade someone at the deadline. But it'll be really interesting to see not only what the Diamondbacks do with Suarez in their lineup, he's a new power hitter in the middle of a very potent lineup, and where Evan Longoria is going to go in the future. In this video, we'll go ahead and examine exactly what this trade means for both the Mariners and the Diamondbacks and look at all the players involved in the deal and what their future likely entails. If you like this video, please go ahead and either hit that base button in the bottom right corner to subscribe to the channel, or if you're on TV, you can go ahead and hit that down arrow and hit the link in the description as well. It really means a lot, it helps my channel grow, and you'll get more awesome content not only from me but from really great baseball creators out there as well. Without further ado, let's examine the Eugenio Suarez trade that just happened a couple hours ago and see how this deal fits within the future for the Diamondbacks and the Mariners. Eugenio Suarez was a Mariners starting third baseman for now two years and he's done really well in a Mariners uniform. His main drawback, and I've already mentioned this, is he's led the league in strikeouts the past two years, which is not something you want to do. He does make it up in other offensive ways and he is a plus defender so it's not like he's slouching on the diamond but those strikeout numbers definitely need to go down for the Mariners to really be successful and they really view this trade as a way to be a contender in 2024. They have a lot of pieces in place, they made the playoffs in 2021 and they got close in 2022 so there's a lot of interest in Seattle at making a deep run. Suarez put together a really strong 2022 and although he's not a batting average guy, a 236 batting average isn't great. He does walk a lot, he had 73 walks across 150 games, so he was putting things together and he hit 31 home runs, so that power is definitely on display. It's not like that was a one-off thing, he hit 49 home runs in 2019, 34 in 2018, and 31 just the year before in Cincinnati as well. He's made the All-Star game, two top 20 MVP finishes, he is a bona fide good third baseman, and the Diamondbacks definitely need that going into their perceived playoff run in 2024. Suarez did regress slightly in 2023. He played in all 162 games, which is an accomplishment that only 10 players did across the entire season. So he's been healthy and he hasn't really had many injuries in his career, which is a very good sign for a player who's now entering his age 33 season going into 2024. His batting average was about the same. His on-base percentage was a little bit lower, but his slugging really took a hit, dropping by over 0.05, which is a decently sized drop. That can be attributed to a couple things, his home run total dropped by almost 10 points, and he hit the most sacrifice flies in all of Major League Baseball with 11. So he got a little bit unlucky with fly balls, not leaving the park, but just ending up as fly outs instead. As I've already mentioned twice already, his strikeouts have been a big concern. 214 strikeouts across 162 games is not sustainable, that's a really really high strikeout rate. And again, the Mariners have a lot of strikeouts already built into their lineup. So it makes sense why they're a little hesitant to include a guy who's going to strike out a lot when they have a ton of guys who already do strike out a lot and they want to make a postseason push. Getting the ball in play, only good things can happen generally. Of course, triple plays, all that stuff can happen, but a ball in play is more likely to be good than a strikeout. So that's what the Mariners are going for now is to reduce strikeouts and it's obvious Eugenio Suarez contributes a lot of them. Even though, as you can see by his numbers, he provides a lot of pop, 
provides a lot of excitement and Seattle Mariners fans loved him. So it is a little sad day for Mariners fans to see him leave. A definite secondary reason for this trade is the fact that he cost $11 million in 2024. That's not a cheap penny for a middle spending team like the Mariners or probably have a salary close to $100 million overall. So cutting that money is going to be big for them. He also has a club option for 2025 for $15 million. I have a feeling they weren't looking to pick that up. If they were, he'd probably still be in a Mariners uniform and they would have shifted around those strikeouts by trading someone else. Maybe they have really deep talks with Matt Chapman right now, who you can check out that video up in the corner as well on the trade that sent him from Oakland to Toronto. Or maybe they have other plans right now. It could be Ryan Bliss, a player that they got for Paul Sawald at the trade deadline. Or it could be someone like Luis Urias, who they expect to take over third base. There's a couple options they can go with, but for right now, I think this is more of an A, cutting strikeouts, and B, saving money tactic for the Mariners. The first player the Mariners got back in this deal was catcher Sebi Zavala, who the Diamondbacks just got a couple months ago back in September. You'll see that most of his highlights are in a White Sox uniform, that's because he only played 7 games in Arizona. Although he did have a good 557 batting average, a 471 on base, and an OPS plus of 149, it was only across 17 plate appearances, so it's not like it's a massive sample size. And if you look at his career numbers, which we're going to do in a second, you'll see that that is not something we should take as a norm when it comes to Zavala. I also called him a journeyman catcher earlier in the video, and I just want to clarify I said that because he was waived by the White Sox and picked up by the Arizona Diamondbacks. And I wouldn't be shocked to see him not stick around too long in Seattle and probably become more of a journeyman guy in the future. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first let's talk about what he did in 2023. Even with his really good showing in Arizona, his numbers for 2023 are not great. He was below the Mendoza line by almost .03, which is pretty sizably under 200. His on-base percentage was below 250, and his OPS Plus was 47, so he was really not a good hitter in 2023. The biggest thing that shocks me about this addition is his strikeout rate. It's 36.3% on the season, which is just absurd. That is incredibly high, and for a catcher, maybe a little more acceptable simply because offensive production is not a huge staple of being a catcher, but... For the Mariners, you were talking all offseason about wanting to cut down on strikeouts, and you get a guy who strike out a ton? It just does not add up, in my opinion, and although he's going to be young-ish at 30, and he hasn't caught a ton in the major leagues, there's still a little bit of time for him to develop and go into his fifth season next year. I just don't get this for the Mariners. He strikes out a lot, he's not a good offensive catcher, and although he does provide some defensive value, it's not like he is a phenomenal defender who's going to go and, you know, frame everything perfectly for your pitchers, and really impact the game in a huge way as a defensive catcher. He really doesn't catch a lot of guys stealing. Granted, this year was a little bit different, but he only caught 14% of all stealing-based threats this season, which is relatively low for a catcher, so it's not necessarily a great thing for him. He'll be a solid player, but I also wouldn't expect him to be on the Mariners the entire season. I think he'll probably get waived once or twice. He's not going to really be a world breaker, but the Mariners have a plan, and they have more knowledge about baseball than any of us will ever have, so I will trust their organization and just see exactly where he ends up. The final player we'll talk about in this deal is Carlos Vargas, a prospect right-handed reliever who just made his debut this season with the Diamondbacks. He signed with the Guardians in the 2016 International Signing Class for $275,000, and he caught on a little bit late as a prospect. He's 24th overall in the system according to Baseball America and recently fell off the list for MLB Pipeline when they updated midseason this past trade deadline. He was acquired by the Diamondbacks just under a year ago in a swap for minor league pitchers in an attempt to just bolster both teams' upper minors bullpen. There's really only two things that really excite scouts about Vargas, but they're two really strong reasons why. He has a 100 mile an hour fastball that can blow away hitters, and his slider is ranked by Baseball America as a 70 on the 20 to 80 scale, which rates out as an elite pitch. That is something you don't get every day, and that combination has the potential to be a back end closer or eighth inning kind of guy in the major leagues, and that's why the Mariners wanted to get a guy of that caliber. His big thing is his lack of control, and you get that a lot from guys who really throw fastballs a ton and have that really high electric stuff. He walked 17 batters across 37 innings in 2022, which is not a great number, but it's sometimes the best you can get with a reliever of his caliber. He made his Major League debut in 2023 at the back end of the season and did not impress super well across four and two-thirds inning pitched. He struck out seven, which is awesome, but also walked four and had a walk and hits per inning pitch of around two, which is not really sustainable. 
I'd be lying if I said Vargas was someone I'm super excited about. He missed all of 2020 due to the pandemic, missed all of 2021 due to Tommy John surgery. So there's still a little bit of unknowns about what exactly he can do, but there's still a lot of potential that he could be a very good player going forward, so I'm not going to write him off. If the Mariners can tap into something, maybe something can happen, but for right now, I am not 100% convinced that this is a good idea for them to go ahead and get a project player that might not pan out and might not be an immediate help to their playoff success in 2024. Let's go ahead and evaluate what I would give both teams on this trade. Let's start with the Diamondbacks, and I think this is a very clear A+. Third base was one of the weaker points on their roster in 2023, and they went out and got a very good player to go and replace Evan Longoria, who is now a free agent. I think with a couple more really good additions, they will be a very competitive team in the NL West next year, and who knows, maybe they make another surprise run into the playoffs. I wouldn't be shocked to see them make another deep run, and I think Eugenio Suarez would be a key piece of that if they do. He's been nothing but healthy over his entire career, so his injury risk is relatively low, and if he can really put those things together, I think the Diamondbacks have themselves a steal on their hands. For the Mariners, I really hate this trade. I do not understand why they would go ahead and trade Eugenio Suarez for what they did. Sebi Zavala is not someone who's going to help your strikeout total at all. So if that's something that, like, I've said it so many times in this video, but the Mariners have said they want to cut their strikeout total, so why get a high strikeout catcher? Especially given that you have Cal Raleigh, who's going to be a bona fide catcher for a while, and one of your top prospects is a catcher in Harry Ford. I personally don't get it. It's not like Zavala is some standout defensive catcher either. He's solid defensively, but he's not elite. Colors Vargas is really the only thing that makes me bump this trade up from an F to a D+. And I think that's simply because there's a little bit of potential there. 100 miles an hour is not easy to get to. It takes a lot of work and not everyone is able to do it. 100 miles an hour is really difficult to swing at and make contact to. Ask any major league player. 100 miles an hour down the middle is a lot harder than 92 on the corners. It's going to be really interesting to see what the Mariners do to try and tap into his skill set. But he's not someone I'm really excited about. And I think the value here is going to be vastly different. And in a couple years, we'll look back at this trade and say the Mariners really messed up and this ruined their competitive window. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you're a fan of either of these teams, I hope this trade works out in your favor. It's going to be two videos popping up in the upper right and upper left corner. Watch them if you're interested in either of them. And there's going to be the base bar there in the middle to subscribe to the channel. And if you're on TV, again, down arrow and just hit that. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope to see you all in the next video.